Looking at this response, all I can see is, yeah, I'm the it girl, I bang these, I've got engagement, so I'm the presenter of the show. How is somebody that is the founder of Make Motherhood Diverse not the front runner of a show like this? It's the colorism for me. Welcome back to my YouTube channel guys. So by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about Rochelle Humes and Candice Braithwaite and this whole drama that has been happening on the timeline. If you're new to my channel and you do not know who I am, my name is Gade Philip or Gade for short. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the ting. For those of you that do not know who Rochelle Humes is, Rochelle Humes was originally from the band The Saturdays. She then went on to television presenting. She appeared on This Morning, The Extra Factor, The Hit List. And recently she appeared on um, a documentary about racism growing up. Candice Braithwaite is an author, journalist and TV presenter. She is also the founder of Make Motherhood Diverse. So with that information, I'm going to follow on with what has been going on. Three days ago, Rochelle Humes put on her Instagram page a message and it says, I'm currently making an investigative documentary looking behind the shocking statistics that in the UK, black women die during pregnancy, childbirth and shortly after at a rate of more than four times than the white woman. I want to find out why it is and have met some incredibly brave women as part of my investigation into what's going on. This is a very difficult and sensitive issue, but I think in order to make a change, it's, it's really important to give a voice to families that have lost loved ones in this nature. I'm hoping in making this film, it leads to tangible changes and solid commitments to bringing the rates down. Now, on the following day, Candice Braithwaite has gone onto her Instagram and she's basically voiced how she felt. Well, that got interesting. I appreciate the love and support. The truth is up until six weeks ago, I thought I was going to present that documentary. I had been contacted in March of 2020. It had been an ongoing discussion for the last nine months of the year. I'm not sure what happened, but it's not meant to be. Although it will always be something I'm passionate about, I have set my ego aside because it's not only I who tried to highlight the disturbing data when it came to black women dying in childbirth. It's a group effort. It always has been. So as gutted as I was, that message remains the same. And it's such a serious issue that we should hold space no matter who is narrating the story. Why is this happening and what can we do to fix it? Hopefully documentaries, books, and most importantly, listening to black women will help fix things. She's just saying, oh, she's not doing it and she hopes that the message is still conveyed how she would have wished it to be. Following from that, social media has gone into an outrage. Obviously, the, ba the black community have voiced their opinion about Candice and why she wasn't chosen. There has been many speculations as to it being racism, colorism, and all of that stuff. In response to Twitter and social media going crazy about what has happened, and obviously people kind of reading in between the lines of the caption, Candice has wrote another post and it says, I can't keep up with you lot's messages. The love is real. I need a moment to gather myself, real talk. The end goal is the same. I'm gonna work hard enough to become a gatekeeper. The key is ownership. I don't come this far to just come this far. Big love to all the dark skinned black women in my inbox who are using it as a safe space. After that, Reese Parkinson says, I'll never forget when you and Agnes came on my show and talked about this subject so passionately, gave real life experiences and educated us all. You are such a special human being. This doesn't sit right. I'm light skinned and it makes me feel sick if this was based on colorism for a bigger appeal. Obviously, the narrative on social media is that everybody thinks that this is to do with colorism, um, that Rochelle Humes appears to be better or more visually appealing to the masses on this platform. While this whole situation was going on, everybody literally started to attack Leanne. Leanne is an artist in the girl group Little Mix. Now, somebody wrote a tweet and it says, so we've got light-skinned Leanne from Little Mix leading a documentary about colorism. 
Now we've got mixed race Rochelle Humes leading a documentary about black maternal deaths. Media industry is a pigmentocracy, or however you say it. Her partner responds by saying, bruv, shut up. You haven't seen it yet. And since when has it become a problem for a light skinned person to speak on their experience with race? Then her sister also responded by saying, correction, LA pitched her documentary based on her own experience and chose to include colorism to highlight the very issue you speak of. Don't ever question my sister's intentions because she's out here doing a lot for the black community. I personally feel like, yes, that documentary could have been presented based off of the fact that she has been in shows where she talks about racism, colorism, being bullied, all those type of things. Later on that day, Candice Braithwaite goes onto social media to just update everybody on what's going on. The producer of the show that Rochelle Humes is to present has called me asking me to clarify that, that I was never in the running to present that particular documentary. So for the record, I was contacted in March 2020 by a different production company about developing a similar documentary and had been speaking with them throughout 2020. Our last Zoom call being on December 1st, 2020, I've been advised that the show with Rochelle was also being developed at the same time. I was engaged in discussion and was obviously commissioned. The producer said that unfortunately for him, his show was simply acquired first and these things happen in television. I was also told that I would never have been a front runner for this particular documentary as they prefer their subjects to be removed from the situation so that the element of discovery about an issue is genuine, but that there would perhaps be room for another documentary of the same nature after this one has aired. Wouldn't it make sense for somebody that is more in it to do it? That statement was a bit weird. Then it says, they had asked me to contribute my expertise, but I declined as I don't want my trauma to be mined for a show where I have no control of the narrative. My agent had asked a few weeks ago if there was a possibility I could co-present alongside Rochelle and was told there was not. At the end of the day, I cannot overstate enough how important it is for the issue to be spoken about until we are able to save more black women. On a personal note, I've learned a lot and I'm thinking carefully about my future in TV. On the whole, thank you guys so much. I personally find it very cheeky that this show is supposedly not related and it's two different production companies and all this blah blah like how is somebody that is the founder of Make Motherhood Diverse not the front runner of a show like this. It's the colorism for me. Everybody is literally roasting Rochelle because they're just waiting for her response. Hey gang, the situation around the documentary playing out online is complex and I know that my response won't satisfy anyone. That being said, I'm going to speak to the facts and what I know to be true. Firstly, I recognize that I am contributing to a conversation that many black women have been central to and fighting for a long time. When taking on this project, it was necessary to the producers and I that the voices of people who have been directly affected are centered in the storytelling. It's important to me personally and everyone involved in this documentary that this ongoing issue is brought to the widest possible audience. I want to utilize my platform to add further reach and visibility to the ongoing issue with the sole intention of creating broader awareness to affect change. I was offered the role as host last year to go on an exploratory journey through the lens of the audience to ask the question why. To tackle the issue on a national scale, it involves a community of people pulling together to advocate and rally for change as ultimately we all share the same goal. This is bigger than me and not about me. I'm just bringing the topic to a wider audience and championing the incredible women that haven't yet had their voices heard. I want to honor the brave people who have opened up and shared their journeys in the hope that collectively we can understand, learn from and end these needless deaths. Looking at this response, all I can see is, yeah, I'm the it girl, I bang views, I've got engagement, so I'm the presenter of the show. 
I don't care how much people you have as a following. I don't care how many likes you get. A show can do the job. If they pay for social media marketing, the show can reach the same amount of numbers. If you're so into your black women and you support your black women, and if it takes a community, why have you not rallied Candice underneath your wing and said, do you know what? Let me bring you in. Let me plug you on a little 10 minute segment of the show, like, n like nothing, nothing. All you said is, I've got clout. That's all you said. All you said is, I've got clout and, and that's why I've got the show. Well, one thing I wanna say about TV is, we need to be realistic when it comes to TV. This colorism situation isn't the end, yeah? More situations like this are going to come. Every show that we watch has that one token black girl. Every show that we watch will have an ounce of color just to give a bit of diversity. You will never see a show on British television with a full black cast or even 50% black cast. It's just not gonna happen. And it's just a shame. That's why us black people have had to make our own platforms, make our own avenues and rally around each other ourselves because situations like this happen all the time. I feel like in the black community, one thing that we often do is we or we dissect what it takes for a person to be black. There are some people that want to identify as biracial because they may feel like, oh, they're canceling out their other races. And there's some people that want to identify as black. Now, let's be realistic. If you, if you saw a man being chased down the road and you was asked to describe what that man looked like and the man has a tint of brown, you're most likely going to call that man black. You're not going to say he looks 50% this, he looks a quarter this. You're not going to do that. I don't like the fact that people are saying that because you're mixed race, you're not black enough. Like, a lot of that was... A lot of that narrative was put out on social media. One thing I do have an issue with is the fact that if this woman is said to be the person that was originally meant to be on the show and they replaced her with Rochelle Humes, that borderline is around the whole colorism situation and that needs to be addressed. If you are biracial and you have black in your genes, do you identify as black or do you identify as biracial, multiracial? That was all for this mix up, got it. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the ting. And thank you for the love every blood clot time. Wataguan pa, wataguan.